Folks, this is a very exciting time for me. I'm joined by the stars of Assassin's Creed Mirage and the voices of Basim and Roshan, Lee Majdub and Shorey Agdashlu, as well as Sarah Bolio, the narrative director of Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now, I know Assassin's Creed fans were thrilled at the announcement of your casting. So I, I have to ask, and Lee, let's start with you. How were you first approached about this role and what was your familiarity with Assassin's Creed? Well, I mean, my familiarity, I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar. I'm a big gamer, uh, you know, played one, two, Brotherhood. And I remember being pulled into Assassin's Creed one, especially, you know, being in the Middle East and being a Middle Eastern person. And uh, yeah, so really cool. Uh, as far as like how it came about, I was, I was asked to read for it. And then through that process, met the team. Um, and kind of discussed the the whole journey and what they were going for, and I was I was really excited from the very beginning, just to like it is pretty you know, exciting. Assassin's Creed, like I don't know, it yeah, is, really cool. It is after all, Assassin's Creed. Of yeah. course, I was I was familiar with it, mm. but I didn't know it as much as I'm, I'm familiar with it today. Right. Well, we wanted you, Shore, uh, as the voice of Roshan very early on. That was something we couldn't miss. Um, so when you said yes, I think the whole team was was thrilled, and and hearing you the first time as Roshan was very powerful for us all, for sure. And I remember our first meeting, talking about the the pod and how you know much research researches you did before, and and how close you were to the character and how you know how passionate you were about about that. It was very uh, heartwarming for us. <sighs> and and as for Lee. Well, he knows uh, that he brought something uh, to the character that I, I wished he would, which is the, the light that we wanted for Basim. Basim is a character from Valhalla. People may know him for his, you know, um, dark path in Valhalla. But what we needed is, is someone who could bring the, the, the kindness and the light of the uh, early Basim, you know, from the beginning of the game until the end. And he brought that and he brought his... Um, his kindness, yes, that's that's not a bad word, actually. Okay. That's a yeah, that's a great one. Kindness is the right word. You're yes, right for exactly. Basim. Yes, exactly. it's the eyes. No matter how tough. <laughs> yes, it's the, yes. eyes. Yeah, it's exactly. the big, eyes. yeah, it's the yes. deer eyes that I have. <laughs> oh, mm, yes. yeah, it really sucks people yeah, in. Yeah, the headlight. <laughs> you take a compliment, like no problem. Yeah, right. right. I love it. I love Thank it. you. Yes, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Shorey, I want to ask you too. What does it mean to you to depict a character like Roshan? in a setting like 9th century Baghdad? I'm going to ask you a question. Who doesn't want, what kind of an actress does not want to lend her voice to a courageous woman who stand up for justice? <laughs> Obviously, I was so <laughs> proud. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for having me in this game. You know, at the end of the day, us actors, mm -hmm. we're storytellers. The story needs to connect to us. We need to feel like relative. And therefore, so we, we, we can realize that we can do a good job. And when I first read the story, I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, amazing story. Thank you. That's well, rarely do you see like a, a strong Middle Eastern mm -hmm. woman of an older age, yes. you know, be kind, like the guiding light yes. in a story. Yeah. I, I fell in love. As soon as I heard your voice, as soon as I heard your name was attached, I was like, okay, yeah, 100%, <laughs> good job. And then I heard your voice for the first time, and I was Thank like, oh. and like it just so, so your strong. your voice in the studio. And you were like, no, I, I don't like it. <laughs> and, and I was like, that sounds like Bassem. It is Bassem. The day is new. There is work to be done. Durwish has left another contract. Who for? Your voice changes right mm -hmm. throughout the, the course of the story Lee. yeah 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 i mean that was a that was a discussion with the team we had this this conversation and i and i had this idea of like well what if his voice also evolves as he evolves through you know from starting out as a thief and, and he's a little bit more cocksure and arrogant and and mm -hmm. has a little bit more of that smirk on his face so finding a lighter register because he's in a lighter like time in his life mm -hmm. you need something stolen i am your man Durwish can attest. And then as he goes through a little bit more trauma and, and seeking out the hidden ones and joining the hidden ones, his experience kind of informs his, like the depth in his voice, the way he breathes changes and his efforts when he climbs change. And when an actor like Lee brings the suggestion like that to the table, yeah. what is it 
at, you know, what's, what, what is your impression when, when an actor does that? And what does it bring to the character? Well, um, especially when you have an actor like Lee that asks a lot of questions. Exactly. <laughs> but I do love that. You know, I do. But it's, uh, yeah, actually, that's what you just, just, just said. It's being curious about the, the character, finding, you know, tweaks and stuff that we could add to the characterization, actually. When you have actors that are so committed into finding little stuff like that, it, what makes a character is the details. And, and this kind of details is meaningful. So we do tell the story together. And, and what they brought to the character is, to the characters actually is very um, meaningful to, to us as storytellers. Well, it's a very, very collaborative process. Like I don't, it I don't know about indeed. you. It was indeed, yes, every and, step. And there's times like you'll work on a project and it's not very collaborative. They're very glued to like, okay, you say it this way, say this line, do it this way. We don't have a reason why, do it Problem as it is. They forget that this art is all about collaboration. Right. It's not about you say or you, it's about us. Yes. The story. And therefore, it's first story and then us bringing it to life. Yeah. yeah. Therefore, all it takes is collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. I'm such a fool if I believe that it's all about me. Because if you don't shine, I won't shine. Yeah. If you don't shine, mm -hmm. I won't shine. Mm -hmm. And this one was the best example in terms for me in terms of collaboration. One of the best things I've ever worked on. Yes. That's great. You are here in body, but are you here in mind and soul? You know, Roshan as a, a more mature character of Persian origin was someone that really resonated with you. Do you find parts of yourself in her character? Oh my God, of course. We have a lot in common okay. with Roseanne. I never forget this. When I received the script and I started reading it, I noticed that uh, th there's a line about Roseanne that says, Roseanne uh, is a representative of justice, uh, diversities, e ethnicities, and cultures. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, my God, of course, this is right up my alley. I can, I may be able to do a good job with this one because I can identify with this female warrior a lot. I've, I myself have gone through a lot and have been trying very hard to bring justice into this, to our world, in, to our communities. And now I am portraying a woman. I'm lending my voice to a female warrior. You know, when, when, Women are at work and uh, are courageous, are, are courageous enough to stand for their basic rights and fight for justice. How delicious that is. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and, and Lee, you were mentioning too, you found a personal connection to Bassam as well, right? Yeah. I mean, it like there's so many, like my journey with regards to like when Mirage came into my life, um, Bassem's story with regards to, you know, seeking out, like, where does he belong in the world? He knows he's meant for something better. Uh, he's dealing with his own demons. Uh, he's suffering from nightmares. Um, you know, is it, is it sleep paralysis? Is it mental health? Is it anxiety? Like, all, all of these things. And, you know, Middle Eastern, Arabic speaking, and I remember like a, a part of my life, like in my late teens and early to mid twenties, I, I, I struggled a lot with like my identity around being a Middle Eastern person, male, uh, with regards to prejudices and everything. So I kind of shunned that part of my life for a very long time and that identity. Didn't want to speak the language anymore. Didn't want to tell people I was Lebanese. Didn't want to tell them I was Middle Eastern. And so a big part of like finding myself again has been finding that love mm -hmm. of the history and where I come from. And I remember about seven months before Mirage came, I reached out to my mom. And I was like, Mama, I, I want to learn the language again. Mm -hmm. And so we just started spending like three, four days a week. She would send me some Arabic. She's like, try to figure it out. We'll figure it out together. And um, seven months into doing that, Mirage comes across and they're like, one of the questions is, can you speak Arabic? And I was like, I can't, I can read, I can speak, I can, you know, and then your know, mom was involved too with like helping me kind of decipher some of the language as well, because context was everything and it's old Arabic, which is very different from like the Lebanese dialect. Um, but yeah, so it came at a time in my life where it was like, you know, refinding like that identity that you know, I loved when I was a child mm. and then grew to have resentment and, and self-loathing around a little bit and now finding that love again and being able to 
voice this guy that's trying to find that. Yeah. It was really, really, really cool. And to embrace your heritage. That's the thing too. I mean, <laughs> this this oh, whole game is about me. It did that's it. that's this whole I game. Be proud is, of my heritage. Of course. Yeah. It's an it, it does embrace it embraces the whole history of the Middle East that I think a lot of us don't know about. Like I didn't know that Baghdad was such a hub, especially mm -hmm. in the ninth century, and it was like multicultural mm -hmm. and multilingual and multi-religious and and collaborative and trade and like. I was like, oh, no wonder, like, my genealogy is so mixed. <laughs> like, you know, historic, like, we're all from everywhere, yeah. especially in that area. And I was like, right. Could listen to these two talk about their characters <laughs> yeah, all too. day. Like, yeah. But I, I have a, a final question for you, because yeah. obviously you wrote the characters of Bassam and Roshan before you cast Lee and Shorey. How did they evolve as characters after the casting and after the performances came through? Everybody, and, and, and myself included, put something into Basim that is very personal to us. Um, whether it's the trauma, whether it's the sleep paralysis, or, you know, uh, different stuff on his outfit, for example. But the fact that you found something, you brought something that was personal to you, and it was reassuring seeing, seeing you, um, you know, being so, um, so invested in the character because we always fear that what, what, what we write is too personal so that people won't connect with it mm -hmm. because that's too... But what we tell when we tell stories, we tell something about universal feelings, what it is to be a human. And, and the fact that you brought that and you were so, so into it right away, <laughs> it was very reassuring and it helps us what writing you know, furthermore about the character. So, yeah, you brought that. You brought your light and everything, and that was that was amazing. And and about you, Shore. I mean, what can I say? It's it's. Sure. It was like yeah, you you brought <laughs> you obviously your your voice has a uh, natural power. So when you when you when you did the first lines in the recording uh, session, I remember everyone was, you know, we we were impressed, and oh, you brought God. the charisma obviously to the character right away. I mean just with your voice, which is, you know, amazing to watch and to witness. And, and it's really much like a, um, you know, like a, like a Frankenstein movie when you hear the, <laughs> the, the actors, you know, saying the line for, for the first time, it's like, okay, it's alive. Right. <laughs> the character That's... is alive, you know. It's, um, and, and it's always powerful as a moment for, for us as, uh, you know, writers, narrative designers, whatever, voice designers, everybody was, yeah was amazed. Are you ready to leave your life behind? About your voice, I mean, I remember seeing the trailer reveal. When you say my name, what's my name? Basim Ibn Ishaq. Like, <laughs> like, I remember chills. I love Dude, that. hearing I love that, that. Like, I'm, I've heard her voice, you know, as we're recording and everything, <laughs> but that trailer reveal with that opening, <laughs> I immediately was like, like, just in hearing that, I was like, okay, this this woman, this character has gone through a lot. Yes. And is coming through a lot of experience. Like you hear that, you hear just that. in those three exactly. words, she's saying Bassem's name. Yes. And already you know it's coming from someone that is a master. I don't know what the point of me saying that is. It's just like to, to say that like you. you hear that and you feel, at least I felt it immediately without needing to know much about anything about the character. I was like, uh, I get it. The minute Roshan sees Basim, she knows that Basim has all the characteristics, of, all those ingredients to become an amazing hidden one who, is, who can stand for justice. And obviously this woman who's been through a lot, as you were mentioning rightfully, uh, has gained lots of experience that has led her to become wise, pretty wise. And she's looking for the right person the next king or mm. you know, that she can just relay whatever she's learned Pass the torch. throughout her life, relay to this young man. And so the saga can continue. Mm -hmm. You it's, have me way more excited than I was even at the beginning of the interview to play this <laughs> game. We've done so, our job. Sorry, Lee, Sarah, thank, <laughs> you, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And a huge thank you to Ubisoft. Yeah, of course. Thank 100%. you to YouTube thank you. for bringing so much to the project. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. For being magical. Yeah. <laughs> so exciting. 
So exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited. Just as a fan, too. I'm just like, I can't wait. I yeah, can't right. wait to play this October game. October 5th can't come soon. I, can't, I know. I know. It's got to happen. It's going to happen soon. It's uh, going to happen soon. Yeah, soon. I'm okay. I can breathe. How many hours do we do? Yeah. <laughs> We're counting down for sure. Yeah. We're counting down for sure.